Thank you everyone so much for tuning in for this 2020 Toyota Highlander night video. Now I'm going to give you a look at these exterior lights, the interior lights, and we're going to go for a test drive and check out this adaptive function with these LED headlights as well. Now I do have a full daytime review if you want to check that out, but without further ado, let's get started. So starting right up front on this 2020 Highlander, let's go ahead and take a look at these headlights. You're going to get LED headlights on every single trim. See this little strip at the very bottom right there? That's an LED daytime running light. You're only gonna get on the top couple of trims. Um, it run, you know, during the daytime, it does look pretty slick as well. You're also gonna have LED fog lights on all except the base model, except the upper trim here. We have the Platinum. You actually get high performance fog lights and they do a really nice job. They're super wide. I haven't actually been able to use them um, during fog, but even in real dark situations, they do great. Now one thing with this Highlander, this is a $52,000 trim level and you still get that incandescent turn signal. You know, I understand on lower trim Highlanders, but pretty much everything nowadays has the LED turn signal, even the, uh, you know, even non-luxury models and cheaper, cheaper models of some comparative vehicles. So as you can see, this is the redesign for the Highlander. It has kind of an interesting look. It is growing on me some, but it's definitely not my favorite. Um, as we kind of come around to the side, this is the moon dust paint. It's almost like a bluish silver. It's a real pretty paint. It looks nice in the daytime. It looks nice at night as well. And you can probably even tell the Highlander actually got stretched a little bit. So it's a little bit longer now. This top platinum trim gets some pretty large 20 inch wheels. You can see the marker light on the headlight, even LED signals in those side mirrors. One thing with the side mirrors though is that they don't actually automatically dim. Um, I would expect maybe the driver's side to dim on this $52,000 Highlander, but still uh, you gotta move up to Lexus if you want that kind of stuff. But what do y'all think of this paint? And for that matter, what do you think of the redesign of the Highlander? It's got a really large rear haunch back here. That's kind of the one thing that I'm not too sure about, but the taillights, as you come around to the back, these look pretty cool. These are LED taillights. LED is gonna be standard, uh, this taillight design on every model. They've got a really unique pattern to them. So as we get a little bit closer, you can see kind of like a, almost like lines and dots in them as well. They're really unique, look pretty cool. They, they stand out even in the daytime. And again, you got an incandescent turn signal. So I kind of still expected some LEDs, but one pro, is that those are super cheap and easy to change out if you ever have to. Now, as you take a look at the cargo area, so first of all, uh, we have two cameras right here and I'll show you what the second one is for. And then you just got regular incandescent uh, license plate bulbs. You do get a hands-free activated lift gate if you uh, go up to the top trims. Otherwise, you can get a power gate on most of the trims. There's no actual dedicated cargo light. So behind the third row, it's pretty dark. I was kind of expecting there to be a light maybe up above on the lift gate, but there is a light that's basically over the third row and you can't see it yet. Anyways, it's right there. So if you have the third row folded down, you've got some good lighting back here, but behind the third row, you're kind of just left on your own. And I'll show you more about this cargo area and all the specs in the full review. And then as we go ahead and hop into the back seat, before we take a look at the ambient lighting in the front, take a look at this. You've actually got some ambient lighting in the door in the second row. So that's really nice. Even that window switch is lit up. And then as you look on the inside here, you don't have LED lights on the interior, but you've got a really nice bright, well, it's not actually super bright, but everything is well illuminated. It's kind of a big broadcast light. And then the second row passengers get heated seats. You've got your own uh, zone climate control. So that's illuminated. The charging ports down below are not illuminated though. Now, here is one cool feature. Check this out. As you approach the vehicle, and if you have the key fob on you, there's a couple things that are gonna happen. So as I get close, you're gonna see that the interior actually illuminates. And another thing I'm just showing you on the other side, the mirror is going to project a puddle light that says Highlander. So that's pretty cool, right? Where you get in the vehicle, can't complain about that. There is no door handle illumination like there is on Lexus's, but when you get in, you still get a really nice interior. You've got some blue ambient lighting. The switches are lit up. I'll show you all that in a little bit. And you even get an illuminated sill plate that actually says Highlander on it. So that is pretty cool. 
a nice touch from Toyota. Still have the same kind of incandescent bulbs. No LEDs on the interior, which was a little bit surprising. Let's go ahead and hop in. Now, as we take a quick look at the interior, so first of all, you'll see this nice blue ambient lighting here. It lights up this door pocket. You've got your light switches, even your mirror control illuminated. There's just nothing in the actual door handle. Then just to the side of the steering wheel, you've got illuminated buttons over here as well, like your heated steering wheel, windshield wiper de-icer, automatic high beams, and I'll go through the automatic high beams in just a bit. So right up here is where you can actually control your interior lighting. So that primarily changes this display brightness. If I go ahead and start turning that down, it doesn't show much difference on the camera, but you can see that you can move it all the way up to like a day brightness setting. But the one thing that some of you might not like is that you can't actually turn off the ambient lighting. You can dim it and it's actually pretty much off right there. But if you go so low, um, it pretty much dims out this screen as well. So some of you might want to turn off the ambient lighting, but still have this screen like normal. And I have not found a way to do that, but I really like the ambient lighting. You can see it on that dash. You can see it on that door handle as well. The dashes I think are the coolest because you've got a nice soft blue without a light actually being in your face. Now, I really like this gauge cluster in front of us. It's somewhat simple, but still has a nice side screen. You've got physical gauges on the side, obviously. Good information, quite a bit of information actually that you can scroll through all your safety settings on here, trip computer and all that. Right in front of us, you also get your head up display, which uh, shows you your tachometer. It can show you your speed, your lane keeping and radar cruise systems. And then our main screen, we have the upgraded large screen. Um, that comes standard on the Platinum. The Limited can get this as well. Otherwise, you get an 8-inch screen. Uh, you can see that on my XLE Highlander review. Um, you've got like three different setups right here on the home screen. You can customize and change what you see. You can move stuff around, so kind of whatever you want. Let's say you go to audio. You can have a whole section to audio and then another section to like your climate, your seat controls, more audio information, trip computer type stuff and you can move that around as well. If you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto going, it just shows up on this one section or wherever you have that section. It would be kind of cool if you could get the whole screen to show you stuff, even with a map, like you do the map, you just get this section. So you don't really get to use the whole screen, it's just split information, but it's still a nice screen. You've got these physical buttons down below. You've got illuminated backlit volume and tuning knob. I think that looks pretty cool. Same with your uh, push to start button down there. And then you've got heated and ventilated seats. Those buttons are here and passenger side, dual zone climate up front, uh, tri zone, including the back. Got this illuminated shelf. You can even slide a cord through there from your charging ports down below. Now the charging ports down there are not illuminated. So let me go ahead and turn on some lights. You get a little storage cubby down there. You've got a few different charging ports as well. Turn those back off, good size bottle holders. The controls back here behind the bottle holders are also illuminated pretty well. You've got a sport eco normal drive mode, kind of an off-roading mode, rock and dirt, mud and sand, or just normal. And then even these controls are illuminated nicely as well. And the auto stop start is interesting. It's just like last generation. Check out my full review to learn about that. And then I'm under some light so you can see some light right here. If you open this up, this is not illuminated in here. There's wireless charging and there's no light down there. It is a really nice large space, but one thing that Toyota does is, so you can kind of see a little bit of a glow on the front portion, like right there. Check it out, cover that up. There is an actual light that shows up better than what you can see here. That light right up there actually illuminates down, which is nice. So it kind of lights up everything right below you. And you've got your typical actual light controls here. And these are just regular incandescent bulbs. They're not LED, which is a little bit surprising, but they're not as harsh as well. So let me know what you think, LED or regular. You've got a panoramic roof in here as well, which really doesn't mean anything at night, but it is still pretty cool. And then one of my favorite features is this rear view mirror camera. So we've got garage controls. You can have an actual camera. That's the second camera that goes out the back. Looks like the sprinklers are running back there. Uh, but you can see crystal clear even at night, or you can flip it and just have a regular automatic dimming rear view mirror. So it's up to you. Now, one cool thing, go ahead and turn the lights on. 
Since they are adaptive on our top platinum trim, they do a little bit of adjusting, a little bit of a dance in front of you. And you can see you've got a really nice beam pattern. It's not a significant drop off to the left, pretty strong right in the middle. And um, one complaint though on the IIHS is that the lower trims had a quite a bit of glare and they have a different type of LED light. Um, our top trim gets the best grade with these adaptive and automatic high beams. Uh, the lower trims with the glare have really good distance, but they get a poor grade, which is the worst grade from the IIHS. And I think one of the biggest things is that we have the high performance fog lights or the high output, and it doesn't look that great right there, but they actually put out a lot of light immediately and out to the side. And we'll test them out at night in, or on a drive in a second. High beams are actually pretty narrow. That's probably my biggest knock, uh, especially compared to like some uh, other high-end lights, but they are still really bright. Let's go ahead and put them to the test. All right, y'all, we are just getting going in the 2020 Highlander Drive. So we're gonna check out these automatic high beams, the adaptive lights. So right away, go ahead and watch. You could see the lights swivel to the left right away. They do a pretty darn nice job in this platinum trim. It's a real shame that the lower trims have a glare issue. Um, I have not encountered any on the road yet at this point because they're still fairly new uh, to really see that. But nobody has flashed me in this platinum trim. And in this test drive, I'll tell you a little bit about how it drives. If you want to see more detail about the driving dynamics and what it's like to live with, be sure to check out my full review in the description below. But the main thing about this drive is I want you to see how the automatic high beams do, how the adaptive function does. Um, and uh, we'll get on some real dark roads in a second. But first of all, let's go ahead and get on it a little bit. This is definitely a high revving engine. It wants to rev out, unlike a turbo. And on this road, the lights are bright enough that even with some overhead street lights, uh, they do a nice job. I mean, they're still bright, but we'll get on a dark road in a second. One disappointing thing to me is that the side mirrors, even on this top $52,000 trim, are not automatic dimming, which is a bummer to me. In terms of the overall driving dynamics of the Highlander, the ride comfort is great. I've got no complaints with ride comfort. It feels like a really solid, well put together vehicle. It takes up, takes the bumps really well. The handling is, you know, it's average for the class. It's not bad, uh, but the way the steering feels is probably my biggest complaint with that. But overall, excellent driving, comfort, perfect for a family vehicle, and pretty quiet. Now I'm gonna flick the automatic high beams on right away. And we'll see when they turn on when we turn onto a dark road right here. The adaptive function, going around here, I could see it swivel a little bit, but it was a little bit bright. Oh, my high beams literally just flashed that person for a split sec. They turned off and now they turned back on. I can see way out there. Not the widest with the high beams, but I can see way down the road. Turn those off so you can see just how the adaptive function does with no high beams. It can still work with high beams. But as we go around this corner, Definitely a little bit of a little bit more of a dip than I thought, but oh wow. You could see that light just shoot right up into that corner extremely well. So that was very impressive. That went right where the road was going. Now, width is pretty good. Good width, especially on my right side. Turn the fog lights on. And obviously you're gonna use them more so for the fog, but dang, that lights up the ditch really well. High beams on, nice straight shoot there as well. I felt very comfortable driving with these at night. Gonna go to the right. Usually the adaptive function works even better going to the right. That was great. They were a little delayed straightening out. One little thing that I could knock on them, but around the corner again, those adaptive lights just swivel right up there. And I can see reflectors way up the road with the low beams on, high beams on, and even the street lights, the side lights, didn't turn the high beams off, which I like. I can see very well up here. No problems with that at all. Yeah, I'm happy with these lights. I'm gonna turn the high beams off. So you can see way out into the, way out into the field with these 
the fog lights. That is fantastic. So like where I live, we got armadillos all over the place. Possums and raccoons and skunks. And uh, I'm gonna see those bad boys from a mile away. This is pretty good. These are some, some of the best headlights on a mainstream vehicle that I've done, uh, that's for sure. So hopefully we get some oncoming traffic in a little bit to test out the uh, automatic high beam function. They actually just turned off, probably because of that street light. We are going, we were going about 50 at the time, so we'll see, I wonder what the reasoning was with that. But you can turn the automatic high beams off or on by using the A button with the little headlight logo on the left there. And uh, so you don't have to fiddle around with touching the screen or anything or messing with settings or flicking your high beams off and on to do that. It's literally just a button. Now hopefully we get some oncoming traffic here in a sec. This is the road that uh, creates some road noise and the Highlander is fairly quiet. It's not the quietest vehicle I've ever tested, but it is quiet. I would say it is improved over last generation, but I didn't get to drive that one a whole lot. High beams were on and they turned off as soon as that car came over the hill and the high beams just turned back on. And they just turned off again. I don't know if it's because of these lights to the left or the cars way off in the distance, but they're still off right now. So maybe they are a little more sensitive than I thought. There is a car way down there now. I don't know, the vehicle's probably smarter than I am anyways. So uh, <laughs> we'll go with that. But at least they're still off. They're not flashing this person. The low beams do a sufficient job as well. They do a really nice job actually. The high beams are probably the weakest point of this car. Um, but these low beams are fantastic. High beams just kick back on right after we pass that car. So that's exactly what you want. And the, the ambiance of here, in here is just, it's great. I really like it. I wish you could change the color of the ambient lighting or at least for some of you, uh, give you the option to turn it off without dimming your main screen or your, your information screen. But I guess that's just something you'll have to live with. Uh, you could probably literally tape where the actual light is. Put a little piece of tape up there uh, in each dash shelf and that could probably cover up the light for you if you really don't want it but overall be sure to watch uh, some of the videos down below check out my full review here and uh, subscribe for more night videos on new cars thank you all so much for watching hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you next time